Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm excited to get to talk to you today. So my question is first for Jack. And I was wondering, you know, you had an American accent in this <laughs> and your actually co-star has an English one. So I just wondered how difficult that was to actually stay with American accent in those scenes. Yeah, no, it was the first time I'd ever played a character with an American accent. Um, so I was a little bit kind of apprehensive going into it. I thought maybe I should just do all of the press from now on um, in an American accent so that nobody finds out. But I guess the, you know, the cat is out of the bag. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was hard. And especially because then they cast everyone around me as English as well. So it was, yeah, there were a few moments where I slipped up and went back into talking like I'm from Downton Abbey. That's funny. Thank you. Coming up next, we have Megan Cooper from Jamunky. Hi there. Thank you for joining us. So, Jack, you brought so much joy and laughter to the film. So I'd love to know how much you were able to kind of improv and put your own spin on your character. Yeah, I mean, I was very fortunate that we had lots of really collaborative people uh, led by our director, Walt Becker, who is, you know, such a fun person to work with and really was able to let me put my imprint on the film and to improvise and to try things out. Um, and yeah, I felt like I was really able to kind of um, bring my sense of humor to it and uh, was really proud of the kind of finished product when I watched it back for the first time. I was so happy that some of the jokes that we tried out on the day that I was like, oh, that's never going to make the cart have actually ended up in the finished uh, version of the film, which is, you know, a rarity with these things. So yeah, it was a, it was a really collaborative process. That's great. Thank you. Next up, we have Amy Fulcher from As the Bunny Hops. Hi guys, Darby, I'm wondering what your biggest challenge was making a movie with a 10 foot dog who I know part of the time wasn't there, part of the time was a puppet. How was that working with um, Clifford? There were a few challenges. Um, there, he was a 10 foot puppet there and these two talented puppeteers would basically act him out and were Clifford's actors and um, in the scene it actually felt like there was an actual dog there because they were so amazingly talented at what they did. It was a little bit difficult for like the more emotional scenes. Um, the, the most emotional one it was just Clifford's head and not the whole puppet and so I was basically crying to um, a puppet head which was um, it was it was funny. I, I mean I it was kind of hard to like not laugh at this Clifford head that's right in front of me. Coming up, like behind the scenes. Okay. Coming up next, we have Kathy Kopka from Bel Air Mummy. Hi, Darby and Jack. Thank you so much for being here today. We absolutely love the movie. And when we watched the movie, my son's like, oh, he's the guy from Jungle Cruise. So I wanted to know from Darby and Jack, what were um, the best scenes you guys, what was the most memorable scenes you guys filmed um, as you guys were filming? My favorite scene was the chase scene where the bad guys are trying to get hold of Clifford for the first time and then we have to escape through the deli and then there's this uh, kind of fight scene with the baddies and all of a sudden it turns into a Jackie Chan film and I've always fancied myself as an action movie star so uh, that uh, sequence for me was uh, really really fun. My favorite scene was probably where I get to drive that was super cool too I was wanted to be in a car chase so <laughs> I finally got to be in one. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Next, we're going to go to Erin Miller from Horsing Around LA. Hi. Yes, my question is for Darby. And we were just wondering if, if had, with your, had you read the, all the Clifford books with your family when you were growing up before you auditioned for the role of Emily? I did. I, I loved the Clifford books when I was younger and the PBS cartoon. I, I loved both of them very much and so I, when I found out about this I was like oh that's going to be so cool live action and they chose me to be Emily and I was just so excited and honored. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Next up we have Monica Young from My Life is a Journey. Good morning thank you for being with us this Saturday morning my question is for Darby. Darby we you're you're right now growing up on an environment where there is a lot of bullying and uh, probably kids are afraid to be different what this is a movie that tells everybody it is okay to be different. What message do you have for all the kids your age that are watching this movie? 
I really hope that kids just automatically take away from this movie how it's okay to be different. And um, being different is honestly good. I mean, I wouldn't want to be the same as anyone else. I just want to be me. And so um, if anyone's ever feeling doubt about being different, it's just know that they're not alone and that it's okay. And, and that um, it's important to accept others for the differences and, and accept yourself for your differences. And it also shows, you know, the impact of what bullying can do to other kids. And I hope that kids can see how important it is to be kind. Thank you. Next up, we're going to go to Karen Bailey from Rockin' Mama. Hi, thanks so much for joining. So I have kind of a fun question. Um, what would both of you do if you had a larger than life dog? I would probably buy a lot of air freshener. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what I would do. I would, I would, I would buy a lot of food. I mean, giant giant animals have to eat a lot so make sure i stock up on food for sure <laughs> next we're gonna go to selena hughes with sitting pretty with selena hi darby and jack um my question is how was it filming in new york city um i did ask the producer and director this question but i feel like as the actors you had a pretty different experience your angle was different so how was it it's yeah, amazing. working in New York was amazing. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was a different experience. I've never worked in New York before. So I, I surely enjoyed it. And it was in the summer. So it was really hot it was the only complaint I had. It was really hot. Mm -hmm. And we were also able to shoot on location so much. And we were all around, uh, you know, Manhattan, and we were in Harlem and Central Park and all of these really iconic locations. And it really mm -hmm. feels like a character in the movie. Um, and, you know, it's not always as glamorous as New York when you're filming a film. Right. You often end up in some, you know, uh, place in the middle of nowhere. And so it was great to be in a thriving, exciting city and to be shooting a movie there was, was really special. Yeah. yeah, great. Thank you so much. Next, it looks like we're going to go to Christina and her team, the Patricios. Yeah, we're the Patricios. Um, we just want to say we love the Jungle Cruise and Christmas Chronicles. Oh my gosh, we just love you guys. And we loved Clifford too. My son Carter's going to ask the question. And, you, and, it's, and it's for Dar and Darby. Are you, slimmer, are you similar to your character that you play in the movie? I'd say that I am pretty similar to Emily. We have a lot of similar similarities. I mean, we both love dogs. I have two dogs. She has a bunch of dogs in one, basically. And um, yeah, there definitely are similarities. Um, I mean, uh, we look we look pretty similar too, I think is one of the similarities. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, she's just so creative and fun and she's a little bit ma more mature than I am at most times. But um, yeah, I really enjoy playing her because I feel like we're the same person sometimes. <laughs> Next up, we're gonna go to Carolina Edison from What C Says. Hi, thank you guys for being here. We love the movie. My question is for Jack. Jack, what was something, what was it about the script that really brought you to want to be a part of this movie, especially with having to, it being your first American um, accent and things like that. So what, what was it that drew you in? I think it just nailed the tone of these um, movies. It had um, lots of humor, uh, but it also had uh, lots of heart and it felt like there was something there for everyone. Um, and I think with a family movie, that's what you've got to aspire to. Um, and it kind of evoked all the like classic kids films of the 90s that I grew up with um, and felt like it stood the chance of, you know, maybe being uh, mentioned in the same um, breath as those types of movies um, and uh, stood the chance of being a classic if we did it right. Um, and yeah, I just I, I read the script and straight away called my agent back and was like, this is this is really great. And, uh, you know, it would be a privilege to be part of it. All right, we're gonna make our way back around to Amanda. Me again. Well, I would imagine on working on this movie, especially when you work with puppets and, and everything that you've got to have some great, at least blooper moments. Can you share, I guess, a blooper or funny moment in making this? I mean, those puppeteers, you've got to give them a lot of respect because 
you know, they were in there every day. It was in the middle of the summer as well. And they're there operating Clifford. One um, puppeteer plays the front and one puppeteer plays the back. But they would switch around because obviously no one wanted to be Clifford's bottom for the whole shoot. So often you'd be having a conversation and you wouldn't know which puppeteer was going to answer because you could never like track who was in the front and who was in the back. Um, so there was a lot of conversations and, um, you know, uh, like realizing you're talking to a completely different person because you couldn't see them inside this like massive 10 foot Clifford puppet. Um, yeah, that was that was quite unusual every day on set. Yeah. Megan, uh, Cooper, back to you, please. So Darby, you had touched on a little bit about the message for kids and we felt it was very much about being brave and using your voice for those in need. So I'd love to know, are there any causes that you like to be um, a big supporter of? I really like to be, you know, a big supporter of, um, I mean, animal rescuing, of course, and, and uh, dogs, of course, things like that, and also bullying prevention. Um, you know, I think that, I mean, if kids out there being bullied it's such a serious topic and and it's hard to touch on that um you know and so many kids are going through like that and I just want everyone, all those kids to know that they're not alone in those situations and so I hope this movie will help them know that and even uh, teach kids to treat people with kindness and see how it impacts other kids. Amy do you have another question please? I know that when you're on a movie set there's a lot of hurry up and wait so for either one of you, I'd love to know what you were doing in your downtime to keep yourself entertained between scenes. Well, on one day when it was my birthday, um, Darby and Isaac, who is also in the film, uh, took it upon themselves to uh, take up music and form a band of their own. We were filming in Harlem and there was a disused church that had um, uh, all of the musical equipment uh, up by the pulpit. And I went in there to have a nice little quiet moment to myself and just shut my eyes it had been a long day and it was my birthday and I was you know a little overwhelmed and I went in and I lay down in one of the pews and then all of a sudden I heard the crashing of the drums and then Darby was on the microphone and they sang happy birthday to me over and over and over again it went on for about 20 minutes and I think I still have tinnitus in my ear and there's a ringing that will never go away because of that rendition of happy birthday that Darby gave me yeah I think that was like the best birthday present too. I mean, I mean, something that you can cherish forever. I can't wait to get my own back when it's your birthday. <laughs> oh no. That's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Kathy, do you have a question, please? I do. So I always like to know, was there something on set, Darby or Jack, or both, was there something on set that you said, I absolutely need to take this with me just to remember the, just to rem remember the moment? I wanted the big Clifford tail. There was also a Clifford tongue, wasn't there? That they used. Yes, there was a Clifford tongue. That you put, that the props um, guy put his arm into and then like dipped it in slobber and then went up and down on uh, people's faces uh, in in the movie. So that exists somewhere, but I don't know who took that. That would have been so good, especially to have a Halloween yeah. when the trick or treaters come through. You could have just yeah. put it through the letterbox and give them a lick, of Clifford. <laughs> Yeah, you're like, oh, you'll never guess why I am for Halloween. I'm Clifford's tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Aaron Miller? Um, so for Darby, what was it like working with having Jack as your uncle in the film? I mean, he is um, in the film a great uncle at some times when he doesn't lose you on the subway or lose you in a bet in um, Atlantic City, you know. Um, and, you know, I think Casey is a fun character. I mean, he's pretty Im immature, you know, so uh, a lot of times Emily was like the babysitter. But, um, I mean, Mr. Jack Offset, I mean, had a lot of similarities to um, Casey. I mean, he's really funny, and I loved how in a lot of the scenes there was a bunch of improvised jokes that were perfect and made their way in the movie and are now in the final cut, so... I just had a, such a fun time with everybody on set too. I mean, we're all like a Clifford family. Thank you, Darby. Monica Young? Yes, this uh, question is for Jack. Uh, of course, we heard already that Clifford was a puppet, uh, but I see that the movie has real dogs. Did you get to interact with the other dogs and how was that experience? Uh, yes, there were other dogs on set. Um, there were 
also there was one day when um they they brought along to the set a lot of dog influencers and we met some of the most famous dogs in america that was a very exciting day and we had an audience with um these you know like corgis that had two million followers on instagram it was so surreal uh but that was a really funny day uh and yeah i mean the uh, the animals that we work with are all they're all pretty good you know people say never work with children or animals but i gotta say on both counts <laughs> The kids were great, and uh, and all of the animals were, were were very well behaved as well. Thank you so much, uh, Karen Bailey. Back to you. Yeah. So, um, what's next for Clifford? Like, where do you see Clifford going? You know, forward after this film. Well, I mean, obviously, I'd like to see him head to London. That would be my <laughs> my ideal. We could have uh, Clifford marauding around uh, London. Um, that would be my that would be my pitch. Me too, honestly. I would love for Clifford to go to London because that means I'd get to go to London. So. Yeah. Uh, Selena Hughes, next question. Hi, did you all have any um, like New Yorkers just try to stand around or say hi or take photos? Any interactions with any of the natives there? I mean, well, yeah, when we would film um, on location, like in the street, and it wasn't um, super like locked up, or we were like right outside of where it was locked up. I mean, people would walk by and like be a little confused on what's going on. And then they see the giant red pup, and they're like, oh my gosh, this is Clifford. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so a lot of times we'd see people like take pictures or like wave, and we'd be like, hi. And yeah. I thought that was a super fun experience. It was super funny. I, I actually enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. We had one day when this uh, we were filming in Harlem and this guy walked past and he had like a face like thunder. He didn't look like he was in a very good mood and he was just trying to get home. Mm -hmm. And I was sort of waiting around on set and he was like, what are you filming here? And I was like, um, we're filming. And I was a little bit nervous telling him because he looked so angry. I was mm -hmm. like, we're filming Clifford the Big Red Dog. He was like, oh my God, I love <laughs> Clifford. Where's Emily Elizabeth? <laughs> and at that point I realized that, you know, everyone loves Clifford the Big Red Dog. Mm -hmm. Even if yeah. you're having a bad day, Clifford can cheer. Yeah, yeah you can brighten up a New Yorker's day. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Now we're going to go back to the Patricios. Okay. Um, Do you want to say your name? Hi, I'm Kennedy, and I want to ask you. Um, who, who are you asking? Um, I want to ask um, Jack. Um, what What made you? Um, what what, uh, what what made you want to be a part of this film? Yeah. I want that very good question. Thank you very much. Um, I wanted to be a part of this film because I wanted to work with Darby Camp. I'd seen her in Big Little Lies. I'd seen her in the Christmas Chronicles. I was like, oh my God, I have to work with her. And so the minute I heard that Darby Camp was involved, I signed up right away. Uh, Carolina, we're going to go to you for the last question. We have one minute left. So everybody got two questions. You may begin. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, this question is again, um, I guess for either of you, I know you were both in this scene. Keenan Thompson is a comedic genius. So how was it being in that scene with him and kind of working with him? I know a lot of it was improv. So how was it? I mean, I'm, I can imagine that scene was hilarious. So having to film that, what was that experience? That scene was hilarious. I love Kenan Thompson. He's such a great actor and, and, and hilarious. I would watch um, the appropriate SNL skits that he was in. And I was honestly super starstruck to work with him. And that whole day, I was just kind of in shock. Like I'm working with Kenan Thompson right now. Like it was just super exciting. And he really was funny. And I, I loved watching him improvise and same with Mr. Jack, them both improvise in that scene. It's one of my favorites. And um, every time I like show my friends a trailer and that scene comes up, I'm like, such, it's the best scene. It's just the best. Yeah, an absolute delight. He was so good. So um, ready to kind of play with it. And uh, that scene definitely felt alive with uh, with possibility. And uh, yeah, really happy with the version of it that ended up in the movie. <laughs>